Welcome to the Thrive TV Show with Lauren Parsons, helping you boost your health, energy, and productivity. Welcome to Thrive TV, helping you boost your health, energy, and productivity. My name is Lauren Parsons. I'm your host today, and I'm so thrilled to be joined by Amy Tepperman. Welcome, Amy. Hi, thanks for having me. So Amy is the founder of Moving Education, Edge as in capital letters, and she helps school teachers to create engaging, well-being-centered learning environments by using movement integrated into the class and social, social and emotional learning techniques to teach different subjects at school. So I'm really excited to talk to Amy about our topic today, transforming the way that teachers teach and the way that students learn. Very exciting. I know that all the parents out there are going to be really interested. So we're going to learn about the trends that we're seeing in schools and the developmental changes that they're causing for our children. We're going to look at how we can transform our classrooms and what you can do at home to support your children. So I'm really excited about this. This is such a topical uh, topic for us to focus on right now with all the fast changing pace of life that we're seeing with technology. So before we get into all of the details, I'm going to ask Amy to answer uh, this and that question. Are you ready, Amy? I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Starting with spots or stripes? Spots. Spots. Nice. Okay. Snow or rain? Rain. Oh, nice. Okay. Logical or creative? Ooh, uh, I'm, I'm going to go creative. Creative. Yeah. I would have thought that. But I'm it's sort of a balance, but I'm, I'll go creative. Okay. Um, Batman or Superman? Superman. <laughs> no question. Nice. <laughs> love Christopher Reeve. Oh, nice. Um, would you love to be able to play 10 different musical instruments beautifully or speak 10 different languages fluently? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, instruments is coming to my, my mind faster. So let's go okay. and play 10 different nice. instruments. Good. I would be languages. I would, oh, but that would be nice too. That's a, t- that's uh, a tough one. That's, that's a really tough one. one. Hey? Yeah. Okay. This is an easy one. Burgers or pizza? Pardon me? Burgers or pizza? Pizza. Okay. Cats or dogs? I have a cat, but I do love dogs. Okay. Mm, we might need to talk about that later. <laughs> so right <laughs> Would you rather be invisible or able to read minds? Invisible. Okay. Good. Um, would you rather be lost on a mountain or an island? Ooh, mm, mountain. Mountain, okay. And lastly, charades or Scrabble? Charades. Charades. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah I want to pick both for all of these questions. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay, so tell you a little bit more about Amy. Okay. Amy Tickman has been engaged in public education since 2010 facilitating dance and movement workshops with thousands of students and teachers across Ontario. This led her on a path to becoming a kinesthetic and holistic learning specialist, a resource author, and a TEDx speaker. And I really recommend you check out her TED Talk. Getting the, What is it called? Getting the Groove Back in Schools, is that right? Uh, how the School Day Got Its Groove Back. How the School Day Got Its Groove Back. It's so yeah. entertaining and so needed. I love it. Um, So Amy's the founder of Moving Education, an organization that supports schools and teachers to create wellness-focused kinesthetic classrooms where students are physically active, creative, and interactive while learning. Her work and teaching philosophy is being used in classrooms across Canada and hopefully will be around the world. So I want to start, Amy, by asking you, what is it you love most about what you do now? I think what what I love most is the uh, this, the reaction uh, to when I tell people what I do, because when, when people ask me, I say, well, you know, I, I create ways for uh, teachers to de- teach different subjects using movement. And everybody's like, how, how do you do that? And then when I get to explain or demonstrate a little bit, and there's this kind of aha moment of, oh, wow, okay, yeah, that actually makes perfect sense. And it's really, it's really simple. And it's that shift in the mindset and the shift in perception that I just, I love being able to experience and uh, have, have, create that in people. That's brilliant. And so tell me, what do you see are the changes that you see in the classrooms that teachers and students are facing these days? So, so yeah, I, I have the unique uh, privilege of being able to see lots of different students and lots of different demographics across a large geographic region. And there's definitely certain 
trends. There's certain things that um, we keep seeing ac across the board that have changed in the last, let's say, three to five years. Um, so just a, a, a couple of examples um, with, let's say, kindergartens, for example. We used to be able to work with kindergartens for an hour, no problem. Fully, full of energy, they were fully engaged. Now, it's much more common that after 15 minutes or so, they're tired, they wanna sit out, it's much more difficult to engage them, so we're definitely seeing a difference in um, physical capacity and attention span. Um, and the other thing that we're kinda of seeing across all different age groups is that resiliency and willingness to try is also something that seems to be decreasing a little bit. The kids are wanting to sit out a little bit earlier and not as willing to step outside their comfort zones or step, up, step outside the box. Um, as much where three to five years ago, having them imagine and play and be creative was something that just came super, super naturally. And now it's, it's becoming a little bit more difficult um, because what we're seeing is um, at an earlier age now, their friend group is much more of a thing, is much more important to them and kind of how they make uh, a lot of their decisions is based on what what their friends are doing and uh, belonging to that group, which is a fully natural survival instinct. Um, but we're seeing that instinct start to start to creep in a little bit earlier. That used to be something that wouldn't start till around grade five, grade six, where that sense of belonging would start to to come into play. And now we're we're starting to see that start to happen around grade two, grade three. It's becoming more common. Um, wow. And the, the way I kind of realized that is that in, in the original sessions that, that uh, we would do with, with uh, students, so we'd have about 100 kids in the gym, and um, we would have them be moving around the space independently. And it, it's really natural for the little ones to just go their own way. And one kid's going that way, one's going that way, one's making a circle, one's going backwards, and they're all kind of like doing their own thing. Um, and then around grade five is when they would start to clump together and start to move more so move in these kind of cliques and packs and make all their decisions based on what the group is doing. And so that, that dynamic we're starting to see around, around grade two, grade three now. And one of the things that we constantly hear from teachers is that there's a lot of higher um, instances of higher behavior needs that we're seeing in the classroom, and which is not necessarily that kids are are, are worse, I don't, I don't know if that's the proper wording to use, but um, we're seeing a lot of displacement of energy. So um, where, because we don't have the same outlets to be as physically active and playful and silly and interactive, um, that pent up energy is coming out in inappropriate times. So uh, it's really important to create more um, safe spaces for uh, that energy to come out so that it is not coming out in, in inappropriate yeah. times. So those, those higher instances of behavior is something that we're hearing a lot about from teachers. So it's about creating ways for them to better use their bodies, get moving in a positive in a way that's just normal and part of their routine so that it's not having mm -hmm. to come out at other times when they're, yeah, and constantly. Mm -hmm. I know it's such a challenge for teachers, isn't it, to try and feel like they're just getting classroom control happening to then be able to get on with the learning. Yeah, and I mean, teachers are also now competing with the instant gratification of, of screens and technology and things changing every six seconds that release the dopamine in our minds that keep us, that keep those happy hormones going now. And now teachers are competing with that, with kids having to sit and listen and face one direction where um, their minds have not developed in that way. They're used to this uh, constant change uh, happening. So teachers having to adapt their practice to be able to compete with that is really is, is something that's really important. Yeah, I heard an interesting statistic on that in relation to technology that, that now the human attention span has gone from what in year 2000 was 12 seconds, which still doesn't sound that impressive, but <laughs> we went from 12 seconds back then to now being just eight seconds, which is less than the attention span of a fish. Mm. You know, if you think of that, it's amazing, isn't it? So do you want to just expand a bit on what has the impact of technology been and what are your thoughts around technology in the classroom? Um, so I, I, I think that it's, it's obviously caused us to be much more sedentary. Um, which is is not a good thing. I mean, we uh, there's a teacher that I, I was speaking to recently that says that every Monday when she asks what her uh, she asks students what they did on the weekend, and a lot of them say that they really they sat and played Fortnite the whole time, or they're playing video games the whole time. Um, so it is 
creating less sedentary, more sedentary lifestyles, um, and just different ways that we're communicating with each other where we're having less face-to-face -face interaction um, and interacting through platforms rather than um, interacting kind of human, human to human. And that is having an, an effect on our, our social emotional well-being, on our uh, ways of connecting with people, on uh, building empathy and compassion towards people because when there is that kind of screen between us and we don't actually feel the energy of people and their reactions to things that um, it, it, it changes the way that we that we view them and treat them so um, yeah I think from both the, the physical standpoint and from the, the social emotional standpoint um, it's it's kind of shackling us a, a little bit I mean there's definitely positive things to technology but we we, uh, we really do have to find a good a good healthy healthy balance and it's unfortunate it's so addicting I mean like I, I'm not free of it either I mean I'll I'll I have to go on long drives very often and uh, the amount of times where even me who's somebody who's very technology reversed and I don't I, I think that Phones, smartphones have done more harm than good. That's just my, for me personally, the amount of times that it pops into my head that I want to check my phone is just. Mm -hmm. It is. It's absolutely. Very, very yeah. 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 And it's amazing because it's that dopamine response that children learn that they get, oh, when I go up a level in the game, it's the same dopamine response that we as adults get when, oh, somebody's liked my post. Oh, I've got a reply. I've got a comment. I've got a notification. And it's something I think that's affecting all of us. And because we're, we're perhaps the last generation that now did not grow up with that just being the norm, you know, it's yeah. really for us to make a difference and to set boundaries in place. Like I agree that technology can be fantastic. We wouldn't be able to do this without it. However, we really need to set firm boundaries. And mm -hmm. I know as a parent of young children who themselves are clearly addicted as well, that it's so challenging to get them off it. And, you know, and then the yeah. repercussions that can follow, but also the less time that they have, the happier they are genuinely. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what is it that you are doing? What are the things, the recommendations, and the work that you're doing in classrooms? Can you tell us about that? About what, I, what I'm doing in classrooms? Yeah. Um, so, I, so I work with, uh, with teachers uh, to be able to integrate movement as a social emotional learning tool into actually teaching curriculum. So um, the way that sort of began was um, I, I was, as, as you mentioned earlier, I was uh, facilitating dance and movement workshops with thousands of, of students. Um, as kind of a one-off, we would come in and, and uh, do our thing with the kids and, and then go. And uh, we started to have a lot of interested teachers in what we were doing, and we started to create resources for physical education and dance curriculum. Um, mm -hmm. But then I had this sort of big aha moment when a math consultant, so all the school boards have subject specific consultants that work with the teachers teaching those subjects and, and um, support them. So one of the math consultants of the school boards, she um, identified or she brought to my attention that there were a lot of inherent math connections that were happening in what we were doing. And she was more so uh, thinking of that we were problem solving because we were being creative and because we were moving around the space, there was a lot of um, spatial reasoning that was happening good so she brought my attention to uh, the connections to the math curriculum and then when I read the math curriculum I had a whole other thought where I thought you know what actually this could be a way that we could instead of you know keeping this phys ed and dance with math connections this could be a way that we're actually using movement and creativity and community building as a tool to teach these subjects and shift yeah. the mindset that movement is for phys ed and that creativity is for the arts but that these are normal human important parts of being human that we want to make the norm of just how we do things so that kind of uh, moved me into creating activities and lessons for teachers teaching more core subjects so classroom teachers so it began with with math um, of how we can explore fractions using up on our feet using our bodies and interacting with each other how we can explore patterning or uh, geometry and data management all different um, math curriculum concepts Concepts where instead of you know sitting down paper and pencil or even using um, manipulatives with just our hands our entire self and the classroom community is what becomes the manipulatives and how and how we learn so I love um, this yeah this is brilliant I mean it just so ties in with as you know we were just talking before about my TED talk on snacking on exercise mm -hmm. and just 
integrating short bursts of movement into your day, one, because it boosts your mood, two, because it's great for your health, but three, because it switches on the learning centers in your brain and makes you more focused and creative and productive. And so seeing that integrated for our children and schools, I think is, I just love the sound of what you're doing. I just feel like I just want you to to be like face to face with each of my children's teachers. (laughs) Yeah, because it has its benefits to both the learning itself and and to well-being because we are getting more physical activity we are getting using our creativity and imagination we are expressing ourselves we're, we're interacting with each other so we have that um holistic health approach that is integrated into the learning but then it's also a great uh, kinesthetic learning tool where we can actually have another outlet to understand concepts so it has both its benefits to the learning itself and to the well-being of the of the self and and to the classroom yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's great bringing those things together. And so for the parents that are watching, are there things you know that you can recommend for people to do at home, for them to encourage their children to do? How can we use this on a daily basis? Well, I, I like to, so the framework that I uh, sort of use to create all of the uh, lessons and activities I create is something that I think that parents can kind of keep in mind at home as well. So um, what, what I realized when uh, working very deeply in the education uh, sector is that it's very brain centered. And when it comes to the body and it comes to the being, so in my work, we call uh, the areas of the self, the body, the brain, and the being. Um, yeah they're very uneven, right? So if we were to kind of draw uh, like a Venn diagram of, of circles, which is how, how, how we do it, um, we would have this big giant brain and then like kind of a little body and a, a little being. And it's, it's becoming more problematic, again, with technology being introduced at a younger age, um, that the body and the being are so far off. Mm-hmm. So that was my goal in, in, in uh, education is how can we even that out within the school day? And I also like to ask parents, like how can we even that out at home how can we be conscious of um, getting more of the physical and the social emotional into um, our daily lives um, in order in order to even that out because I feel like we got we got the brain covered we do need to think of ourselves as an entire self of all of those domains of the self because they're, they're all connected I mean there's so much research to support that movement um, is very related to cognition and to focus. There's a, um, there's a psychologist, a child psychologist, her name is slipping my mind right now, who talks about how um, movement targets the same areas of the brain that ADHD medication targets. Wow. So it's a natural way to help um, all humans, not just children, but really all humans with that focus and attention is um, getting the blood flow to those areas of, of the brain. Um, but also on the, the social emotional side as well, it's all, all connected in that movement is also something that enhances our mood, that makes us feel more comfortable and confident with ourselves, that can bring people together. So we really want to be thinking of how our is are these uh, all these domains of the, that make up the entire self in my child's life and in my life as an, as an adult too, are these things even? And um, when I say in our lives as adults too, I, I think that's really one of the number one things that um, I can say with, with being an adult around children a lot is you have to model the behavior that you want to see. Yes. There's no way we can say, hey, you should do this. Yeah. I know my daughter, she picks us up. We say no phones at the table. And mm-hmm. I took my daughter out for a date. We're out for lunch. Well, we ended up going out shopping and we ended up going out for lunch one-on-one, which was really lovely. And I got out my phone to message my husband at one point. And she said, mom, no phones at the table. And I mm-hmm. thought, yeah, they totally pick up on what it is that we do. And they don't listen to what we say. They just follow what we do. And I know I can catch myself and my daughter's talking to me and I'm looking at something or I'm messaging someone. And I just have to be really strict with myself to think, put it down, turn around, eye contact, you know? Yeah. It's just so it's easy to become their norm that they're talking to us and we're distracted and that's totally disrespectful. I think it's not acceptable. Yeah. And I think if we just focus on taking that responsibility for ourselves, that's just, that's going to translate into, into our, our, our children. And, and full disclosure, I'm not, a, I'm not a parent. I have a, I have a lovely niece, um, but, I, <laughs> but I, who just turned one and started walking and I'm like, I will not bubble wrap her at all. Whatever she is. Like, like, yeah. Obviously she's going to do something dangerous, but mm-hmm. I just like to let her explore and move her body as much as, as possible um but i do get to see a lot of interaction of teachers and and students and 
it is so obvious that the engaged teachers, that the teachers that are in it with the students and are participating and interacting with them, there is such a difference in those sessions that we do with students than the teachers that um, are kind of sitting on the side and on their phone and not really paying attention. And you can see the difference in engagement of the students and in behavior and in, in everything. So it, there is definitely a correlation between adult engagement and what what kids are seeing and how and how they're behaving as well so really I, I think one of the number ones is to really just work on modeling the behavior that you want to see yourself and that's going to translate in, into your kids and yeah. making sure that we do have um, more of an even an evenness of the physical and social emotional into into the day as well so that we're pretty even in our physical cognitive and social emotional development so free play outdoor play um, yes. free outdoor play is a great way to really reach all these domains because we're moving we're imagining we're usually mm -hmm. interacting um, so ways that really encompass the entire self or our activities that I think think are, are really the best for brilliant for and, and I think like you say we need to lead as the adults and as the parents we need to lead I know that my kids we have this game called capture the flag that we often play and mm -hmm. so there's two bases and there's a flag and you've got to try and steal the other team's flag and get it back and so it's really physical and it's you're just totally present in the moment and you, you can't be thinking about checking your phone or you just that's the best thing about it I think is that you're totally present you never know if someone's sneaking up on you and you're just being present and getting engaged and they love that far above any technology that we can give them and they're like, oh, mom and dad are going to play capture the flag with us. It's just yeah. Like, and they love yeah. to see adults engaged in things. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And we, we, need, do. Adults, we need to play more as well and just integrate that movement through the day. It has so many benefits. So oh, yeah. we could talk for hours and hours, Amy, but we are running short on time. So what I'm going to invite everyone to do, if they would like to find out more from you, they can head to movingeducation.com and we'll have the link down below. Yeah, so the, fun, the spelling is, is a little play on words, so you should need to see it. Yeah, exactly. So it's not education, it's edge, E-D-G-E, yeah. education. The yeah, edge so link will be down below. Yeah, did I spell that right? E-D-G-E, education, yeah. Um, so link in and connect with Amy, and I really recommend that you head along and check out her TED Talk, how the school day got its groove back, it's entertaining, and, and as a participant watching it, you need to stand up and do the activities that she does because they're just phenomenal. So yeah, any final words you want to share before we sign off, Amy? Um, I just thank you, thank you for having me, and uh, and I also I, I I I think what I speak about and what you speak about is really in line. So if you're also looking for ways that you can integrate more of the physical um, into what you're doing, then also check out all the amazing work that Lauren's doing because it really made me think of like, oh, these are ways that in the home we could just um, get quick spurts of physical activity in there. So great, you're a great resource. You're a great resource. Yeah. Resource. So, <laughs> my yeah, final thoughts of ways that I can integrate it for classrooms and schools because you know often I'm working with businesses and workplaces and looking at how do we make it more normal for people to get up from their desk and just do 10 squat reaches or something like that or you know some of my clients tell me they allow lunge walk to the printer yeah. <laughs> and things like that. but but the great thing is when we see more than one person do it, it becomes a part of the cultural norm and I think that's what you're trying to achieve as well you know mm -hmm. challenging for kids that do want to get moving if they're combined in a system where it's really leaning more and more towards being sedentary being static and it's not the ideal learning environment one like you say for them to thrive and learn but two for them to thrive in their personal well-being so mm -hmm. i just praise all the work that you're doing i'm really excited oh, thank you you're well. and, spread. and thank you for watching this or everyone that's watching right now feel free to share this and feel free to follow up with us if you have any more questions or we can help you with in any way with more resources so that's been another edition of thrive tv thank you so much for joining us thanks so much amy for being our guest today thank you for having me pleasure yeah. Have a fantastic day. Keep going out, boosting your health, energy, and productivity. Thank you for listening to The Thrive TV Show with Lauren Parsons. Visit thrivetvshow.com to access the show notes and discover our fantastic bonus content. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next inspiring episode.